Hi everyone and welcome to the HWBOT World Tour 2016 here in Cape Town, South Africa and we are today in the last day of this event and this will be the HWBOT World Series for Amateur for South Africa. So this is a competition only for amateur people, so people that never had experience about competitive overclocking before today. So they did the qualifier yesterday out of the uh, over 74 people that did participate in this qualifier. We select the top best four and they will be competing today uh, uh, in one versus one bracket uh, to uh, be able to win some uh, awesome hardware. The first prize is uh, almost a complete setup and uh, then uh, the second and third place will also get back home with some hardware. So keep in mind this over uh, this Brand new amateur overclocker are basically new people that just discovered this uh, in the past, in the last two days, and they will be competing today, today against someone that have exactly the same kind of knowledge that they have. The first, uh, the first match is ready to go, and uh, we will jump into our um, dear judge Massman uh, to see if everything is ready. Massman, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah. Perfect. So are you all guys ready to go for this first match of the final? Yes, absolutely. So we can uh, we can be almost ready to go for that and we will see two of the guys competing. So that's going to be Anne Ro and Jimen 3236. So that's going to be the first match for uh, today. Um, you guys, you can go whenever you want, Peter, that's your turn. All right, so you guys are ready? Truth, are you ready with the time? I am ready. All right, three, two, one, you can start. So you have 15 minutes in total. Thank you, Peter. So as Peter just said, they have 15 minutes in total to get the best score out of XTU. So on the left side, we have Anroad is the red team for today. And on the right side, we have G-Man. 236 that is the blue team for today they are all using the same system and they will be competing again in XTU so the system that we are using is based oh and it's the first blue screen of the competition right at the start this is uh, extremely intense not even 40 seconds and this is already um, a blue screen for Anro so as I said they all use the exact same system they are using an uh, they are overclocking the Intel Core i7 6700K, so that's the fastest Kylex CPU you can get on the market. And they are using that uh, with uh, some G-Skill memory on the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon Edition uh, motherboard, so it's based on the Z170 chipset as well. It's uh, being cooled down by the uh, Corsair um, H uh, H80i GT, so it's an all-in-one cooler, you can see uh, on the on the screen uh, on each side of the overclocker and the JSK memory is a two time four gigabyte kit of DDR4 Trident Z that's exactly the same kit that the uh, extreme overclocker did used yesterday evening in the final of the extreme overclocking leg of the HWBot world series thank you guys for tuning in if you are coming from different part of the world let us know where you are from so I can see that there is a Niul on the live chat. I know that Niul is supposed to be from France. There is a Schnubub. Hi Schnubub, thank you for being here. So if you guys just tuned in, don't forget to follow, to click that follow button on the live, uh, on the live stream here on the Twitch. And if you're watching that as the replay on YouTube, just press the like and the subscribe button as well. So this is it. They have this is this overclocker has 15 minutes to set the best score in XTU. The winner of this first uh, first round of uh, of the match will actually swap the system. So they do 15 minutes in XTU. They have both uh, one score. So this is it. The first score for G Man is 1411 points. So Hanro will have one of the, one of the score as uh, as well. So after these 15 minutes, they will swap the system. So that means. G-Man will take Enro uh, computer and Enro will take G-Man computer. And they will once again bench again for 15 minutes in XTU. With all that, that's going to be much more easier for them because they will all have the exact same chance of competing. What we do is we do um, add the two scores and that gives them a total score. The total score will then be the final score for them. So. 
There is uh, actually, it's super, there's no, pl even if there's a platform that is much, much better than the other one, everything is fine because they all use both of the platform. So that's actually quite, um, it's quite, uh, I think it's quite normal to do it like this. It's uh, super, uh, super efficient and it's also sort of super equal for everyone. So guys, let us know where you are from and don't forget that uh, um, while watching this live stream, you can always still won some of, uh, awesome prizes by going to overclocking-tv.com forward slash raffle and you can, uh, you can win one of these awesome hardware, a Seasonic PSU, an MSI motherboard, G-Skin memory kit or the ultimate collector thermal flask from HWBot. So as we can see on the screen right now, we have some of the guys that are uh, benching XTU. So on the red side of the of the team, we have Anro, and Anro is actually in the lead with 1,420 points, and there is almost five minutes in this first um, in this first game. So let's uh, switch to the screen of G-Man and G-Man is uh, running at about oops, let me check the right frequency uh, about 4.7 gigahertz so the CPU is the Intel Core i7 16700K and by default it's clocked at 4.2 gigahertz oh and it's a blue screen on the other side of the table on the other side of the red table Anro just got a blue screen guys that was um, the second one for for this uh, for this game that's going to be quite interesting to see if he can put out and continue increasing his score for that. During that time, G-Man just finished benching, but sadly the 14, 1408 points didn't per allow it to go higher than this uh, than this one. So if we are if we are having a look at what's going on on the screen, you can see his. Uh, Changing his frequency, going a little bit more. Oh, we have someone cheering for G-Man! Schnubab! Um, Schnubab is uh, cheering on for G-Man. And G-Man is actually quite concentrated. Uh, you can see it on the screen now. He's uh, completely focusing on his system. G-Man is back at 4.6 GHz, while on the other side of the table of the red team, we are just restarting XTU. So XTU is running right now. Temperature is about 50, uh, 56 degrees, 42 now. So it's um, going up and down, but that's normal just because of the different loads. So for 58 degrees maximum, still uh, it's only 4.6 GHz, not even on all of the cores. Is only a, he does only have two cores at 46 um, multiplier, and this is where that's going to be uh, changing. On the other side of the game, Anro is actually going full out, and is at 4.6 gigahertz as well. But he changed the processor ratio cache. The cache ratio is uh, at 44. Oh no, changed back to 43. Maybe not uh, quite sure about that. Running the benchmark. Back to G-Man, and G-Man is uh, adjusting a little bit the core voltage. Very, very, very uh, conservative on the voltage. Maybe uh, maybe that was... Uh, they don't want to... These guys are amateurs, so they, they cannot go as high as they as they want on the on the voltage because they are... No, they don't want to just go too high and, and crash the system. The system will never burn, no no matter what. But it can uh, you can crash the system... Uh, in some bad way sometimes.
So we are a little bit more than halfway through the first uh, first one. Just add a score uh, just before that from Android, did 1416. Still not as good as his best score so far, 1420. It's quite interesting to see that there's a lot of people watching this uh, competition here at the Rage Expo in Cape Town. And uh, we already got the news that there will be another Rage Cape Town next year at the same location. We don't know exactly the date, but we know that it will happen and they will actually be upgrading the sign. So that will be even bigger than this one. So right now on the screen, uh, in the lead of finishing the first um, the first score for the XTU benchmark in uh, in this run, let's go see what he can do at 4.6 gigahertz. So to remind yourself, guys, these people are amateur. That's 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 it. We got uh, it. Just got 1417 points. Let's see what will be the score. 1444 points for G-Man. So that's a good improvement in taking the lead. He's now taking the lead um, against his opponent, Anru. So we'll uh, keep on pushing. They're both at 4.6 gigahertz, but G-Man seems to be more efficient. Even though the processor crash ratio is still only at 40, while if we, uh, if we look on the other side, is at 42 for Enroom. You can see that uh, still benching, still benching. During that time on the other side of the table, we maybe want to increase Gorman. Oh yeah, yeah, keep, keep pushing it, my friend, keep pushing it. That's that's good to do it this way. Apply 4.7. Let's go back to uh, our dear friend Anru. That is almost finishing. 1422, so it's a two point increase in his uh, actual score. The guys are pushing the system a little bit more. We can see 4.7 gigahertz on Anro right now. Not quite sure about and then going running the benchmark. This G-Man almost finishing the, the score. You have to do better than 1444 points to increase his score. And that's not 408. These guys are amateur and they are using the Corsair H80i GT to pull on the Intel Core i7 6700NK. Being used with memory from G-Skill, 2x4GB memory kit of DDR4 Trident Z. And on the screen, there is a little bit more than 3 minutes left in this first leg of the run. This is it. Anru just got a little bit better points, 1441. This is so close from G-Man now. This is super, super close. So we'll have, uh, in the next three minutes, the guy will be... Oh, and it's a blue screen on the G-Man uh, side. The blue side is actually completely blue at this very moment. So let's see, you're gonna have to uh, restart the system. There's Two minutes and 30 seconds left in this first leg of the first semi-final for the HWBOT World Series for Amateur. So Anro is uh, focusing on having his, uh, his uh, screen. You want to be able to, uh, to finish that 4.7 GHz. The processor cache ratio is at 40. If it, we, he cannot hear me now, but if he actually change the processor cache ratio, it will be able to have a little bit more uh, of a boost. But yeah, Anrod just got 1436, still not good enough to uh, go beat G-Man, and it's less than two minutes 
in this first leg. Still no signal from Jimin rebooting the system, so that's uh, every time you crash, it takes a little bit longer to uh, to come back to the benchmark, and that's why you have to be uh, very uh, consistent and uh, sometimes a little bit more conservative now when you do apply the settings. So the XU benchmark is running. We can see 69 degrees pretty much. So that's uh, still. There is still some room for that. They, they won't activate the thermal throttling until the thermal throttling is kicking in. You are safe to go. You are safe to go. That means you, you, have, you still have some, uh, some um, room left. There is about one minute left in this uh, first leg of the final. And I will queue in to Mr. Peter in the next 30 seconds to do the countdown at the same time. So we have Anro that is uh, that is uh, keep pushing the uh, the little details for his CPU, adjusting the processor cache, just pushing one, uh, just pushing one um, everywhere on the other side for Jimin. So far, they are both running the benchmark. Both running the benchmark, and there is 25 seconds left in this first leg of the. Um, semi-final here for the amateur. So they have to launch the benchmark before the end of the countdown. That's the most important part of, uh, of this. So side by side, we can see them. There is now seven seconds, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So this is it. The benchmark is actually running. So this is the last, the last runs. The benchmark is running, that is the last run as uh, Peter just, uh, just said. And if they finish this round, they have to do a better score than the other one. So G-Man have to make sure that... Oh, he didn't got it. So the, the, it's out for, for G-Man. Just Hanro is left. Can Hanro make it more than two points? Can get more than two points for that to, to just have the lead for the next, uh, for the next, uh, for the next round? For the next match to to happen, and we'll see this in a second. Oh, sadly not. He's lacking two points behind, but no big deal. No big deal. The guys, the the guy will uh, will be back in the next few minutes to actually they will swap the system. So Anro will take Gman system and Gman will take Anro system. Just before, just after, we will reset everything uh, at at this point. But it's quite interesting to see that. At this very moment, they are very close from each other. There's only two point difference in between them. Uh, G-Man is in the league, but Hanro is very, very close by just lacking two point in the back. Let's uh, queue in to uh, Peter. Peter, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, uh, they will exchange the system and then start again for 15 minutes. How long can we expect that uh, to happen? I think in about five minutes, we are uh, good to go. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. So, as you just heard, Peter, the judge here from Ejabribot, is actually one of the organizer of the main organizer of uh, of, of this event, and they are uh, right here setting up the system. So, what uh, what is happening right now is we are make sure, making sure that both guys have the exact same chance on the system. Exact same chance means. They will all use the two system. We will add up the numbers from each of the run and make sure that everything is correct for them. That means they have the same amount of chance to win and that will be quite interesting to see if G-Man can get more score than Anro on the same system. Or if Anro can get a much better score on G-Man system. And if we remember, the processor cache ratio was not used on G-Man system to get at this uh, at this level of point. So that's quite interesting to, um, to to see what will happen in the next few minutes. So far, the ranking will be 
will look like this. So we have Anro against Jiman. That will be two um, two legs of this uh, match. The total score will define who is going to the grand final, and then we will have UF Disciple against Chis Jenny, Chis Jimmy. Again, the same benchmark on XTU and the same concept of the um, of the uh, two run for the total score. And the winner of each of these semi-final will go to the grand final. And finally, we will know who is the champion of the HWBOT World Series 2016 here at the Reg Expo in Cape Town, South Africa. So there's a lot of people on the live chat that uh, that came here yesterday, that took the workshop and uh, that could not make it uh, on the, on this final day today. So they are watching it on the live stream. That is, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you if you like what you're seeing or if you like the workshop and want to see to see more, uh, subscribe to the Twitch channel because we will be next weekend in France for the HWBot World Tour Europe, and we will have a lot of workshop being streamed as well as the. Um, Amateur final there, and uh, the uh, of course the extreme final for the HWBOT World Series. It's quite interesting to see that uh, we want to have everything ready in time for the uh, for the overclickers to be ready. You can see uh, you can see them standing in the back. They are not exchanging information so far. Maybe they are that's the that's the way they they are amateur. So we have to remain the, that. Uh, was a uh, was a bit uh, no completely new for them at uh, at this point. So this this is it. We have it. They are all on uh, one side of the table. This is the X the HWBOT World Series final for amateur. That's going to be the second part of the first semi. Let's find out a little bit more what we can. I am ready to go. So on the left side of the screen, you can see G-Man, that is the blue team. And on the right side of the screen, we can see Anro, that is the red team. Let me cue to Peter for the launch. Peter, can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. So Peter, you uh, will be able to uh, say the go in the minutes. OK, we are ready to go. Are the overclockers ready? All right, guys. Uh, three, two, one, and go. And this is it. Uh, 15 minutes to set up the best core on XTU once again. And what is important here is they have to uh, they have to understand that they um, they have to beat the score of their opponent on the same system. And Gman is actually uh, having two point advance against Anro. So let's switch. Their screen. So let's see. Anro is already in the benchmark, and the same as Jiman that we can see now. So they are both doing XTU. They are at 4.6 gigahertz. 4.6 gigahertz on the for for Anro, and it's already 4.7 for Jiman. Uh, but Jiman will not be the the first one to to finish. Anro will be the first one to finish the uh, <coughs> the run. So here we have it. The first score, fourteen hundred and seventeen points. So uh, that's uh, quite decent for a first uh, for a first run there at four point seven gigahertz. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, Ace that can still be uh, used for that. On the other side of the table, we had a 1406 point by Jiman.
is it we are 13 minutes in this second leg of the competition so the total points uh, will be calculated a little bit during the uh, during the time so what we have is Anro is um, actually in the league by nine points but this is because he got uh, a much better score uh, from the, the, compared to G-Man at the at the first uh, first run for that This is it, we are less than, this is already two minutes that this game is started and uh, the overclocker both already have a score. So even though G-Man had two point um, advance in the first leg, is now lacking behind by nine points in total. As we can see, G-Man benching now. They are all benching side by side. Oh, oops, sorry, wrong one. <clears throat> they are benching side by side. And we will see how this will work out for the guys. So let's see, Anru on the red team. They changed the computer, they switched the computer. Um, Anru is at 4.7 gigahertz. He's now touching the core voltage. While on the blue side for Jimin, you are at 4.6 gigahertz still, but still benching at this one. 1350, the score is even lower than before. Something went wrong here. Adjusting the turbo boost settings on, the, on Jimin. Let's swipe to our Andrew guy that is actually in the lead. He's doing the benchmark at the moment. Benchmarking and benchmarking the temperature so far is about 68 to 67 degrees. It's quite high, but it's okay. It's still at 4.7 gigahertz. But looking at the core frequency really used, it's 4.5 and then switching to 4.7 from time to time, depending on the load. Both of the guys are now uh, doing the benchmark to G-Man for the score. The score is soon to arrive. He is at 4.6 gigahertz still, but his core frequency, you can see, is, is staying quite low. The temperature is kicking in in 60 degrees and uh, and a little bit more than that. They have four core activated. Uh, it's like, oh no, I don't want to finish the benchmark for that. No, reduce that window, reduce it. Reduce it as much as you can. Push up the voltage, touching the reference clock. Not doesn't want to go above 46 uh, multiplier for for this system. That's uh, quite uh, things to see. Let's switch to um, 1409 for Anro. Still doesn't improve his score so far, but he's uh, still in the good lead for that. 2865 points. There's a bit less than 10 minutes left in this. Ten minutes left to know who from Enro or G-Man will go to the grand final here at the HWBot World Series for Amateur in South Africa. We have both of the overclocker benchmarking right now, running XTU. It's almost the end for G-Man, still at 4.6 GHz. That will be interesting to see, he's checking the temperature and the CPU utilization for that. Will he wait? Nah, that's gonna be like 1300 as well. Still, there's something. Let's let's go to Anro now. Anro is almost finishing the benchmark, and the score will be 416. Still not better than his previous score, but he's still in the lead by 15 point advance. That's still quite an uh, an impressive score. And there's eight minutes to go, so we are halfway through this uh, second leg of the first match.
Going back at benchmarking straight away. On the other side, Gman just changed some of the settings. 4.7 gigahertz, applying, running the benchmark. Will we see a blue screen? Will we see a blue screen for that one? Not sure we can uh, have that blue screen live, but let's see if we, uh, we can have it. So we have the two guys benching right now. The benchmark will take a few, a few seconds to complete. Anro will be the first one to get the score. Let's see what score he can get. Soon to be, he's at 4.8 GHz, so we'll, he will have a very good score for sure, because the ter thermal trolling is not... Oh, 414. Hmm, so we still need to modify some of the settings, I guess. Something is wrong for him at this point. Temperature at too low, push that voltage, say Newell on the live chat. Yes, that is true, but you have to remind that these guys are amateur. They are amateur, so that means uh, they don't want to push that much the voltage that I, even though we saw some very surprising thing in Brazil two months ago at the, at the first stop of the World Series. We're having Jimin in the system as well, adjusting the reference clock up to 100.2 is at 4.7 gigahertz. Four. Anro is running the benchmark, soon to have the real temperature. Oh, oh, and we just got a blue screen on Gman's side. Maybe that was a little bit too tight make it happen correctly but the two guys are here competing there's six minutes left in this round each of the overclocker are using the exact same system are using the MSI gaming pro carbon edition so it's a Z170 motherboard. They're using the core, Intel Core i7-6700K. They're using two times four gigabyte of memory from Jskill, the Trident Z DDR4. It's being cooled down by the Corsair HADI GT, all-in-one water cooler. All right. That's funny because you guys cannot see it, but uh, there is a uh, Peter and Timothy making fun of the of the voice. All right, Peter, can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah, you were making fun of the commentary or what? <laughs> no, no. We we're all saying how great it was. <laughs> oh, and we got a blue screen once again from Anrod this time. So it seems like he's uh, bringing the blue screen from one computer, one computer to the other one. So let's switch to see what G-Man can do. And we have four minutes and 35 seconds left in the uh, second legs. So this is it. There's four minutes and 30 seconds for G-Man to gain more than six, 15 points to go and beat his opponent. Let's switch to Let's switch to G man. <laughs> I can that, that's funny because I don't know if you hear on the on the mic, but I can hear myself yelling blue screen on the TV that is actually putting the stream back to the uh, to the to the view to the to the crowd here in the in the Rage Expo. So right, uh, right now Anro is rebooting the system so we don't have his screen yet. But but let's what we can see here is Jimin. We need to do 15 points, at least more than 15 points to uh, to be able to beat Anro at this moment in the game. And you still have 3 minutes and 30 seconds to do it. If Anro doesn't put a better score than that, if the score is higher than 14 and 22, it will go in the lead. So this is, can he do it? More than 14 and 22 and no, 14 and 12, still improving his score. Uh, by six points, but still not quite much. And it's a blue screen! But still not quite much enough to go uh, catch up with the uh, with his opponent, Anro. 
Anro is now back in the system. 4.8 gigahertz. You really want to push and, uh, and gain the advance he, uh, he already got. So 4.8 gigahertz. He didn't touch the processor cache ratio. Something he was using before, but not using now. So we'll see uh, what happened. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in this match. And we will see who from Hanro or G-Man would go to the final of the HWBot World Series for Amateur. Two minutes, 30 seconds. So far, Anro is still in the lead. That is interesting to see what the guys are able to do for for this game. So let's see it. That, that is getting quite intense. Still, G-Man is still restarting the system, losing some precious seconds right here. Running the benchmark for Anro. Is at 4.8 gigahertz. Processor cache ratio is at 40. Just change a little bit the core voltage at 1.38 volts. There's still some margin here. Don't forget, they are amateur. They are like regular, like you. If you just tune on Twitch and you're just uh, getting in here, it's like you. You could do the same at home. One minute and 30 seconds left in this last match so Anro have to keep his advance while G-Man was trying to catch up on him just before we want to uh, make sure that everything will be going all right and we have Anro benching and still not wanting to uh, to get the complete system running as uh, as expected G-Man is back in the game there is one minute left in this uh, and this one is at 4.6 gigahertz doesn't seem to want to uh, to push it a little bit more. On the other side, we have Anro that is keep pushing the systems. So 4.6 gigahertz, applying and running the benchmark. Will we see a blue screen in here? So, like before, they have to start the benchmark before the timer is over. Once they run the benchmark, they can finish it if, as long as the timer um, uh, have been pressed before the. Um, because they start running the benchmark before the uh, end of the timer, the benchmark is valid. So this is, we have them side by side at the moment. We have G-Man that will get the score closer to we can. And there is about 15 seconds left, 15 seconds left in this, uh, in this match. Let's count all together. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it's over. Too bad for Anro. He will not be able to run his uh, next benchmark. But G-Man did improve his score at 1420. That will bring him a little bit more in advance. And that means he's still second by one point. This was so close. This was super, super close. So. These guys made it the real deal. Anro against G-Man. This is it. One point difference for these uh, amateur people. It's, this is extremely tight. This is extremely interesting to see. But sadly, G-Man was in the lead for the first part of the game and is now um, being fourth. <laughs> So these guys, this is it. Hanro is moving to the grand final of the HWBot World Series here at uh, the Rage Cape Town in South Africa. So what will happen now is the system will be reset to uh, what uh, to, to default settings for the next uh, guy to actually jump in uh, in the game. During that time, we'll take a very short break for the for Peter to uh, reduce all to to reset all the system, and we will find you back in the next few uh, minutes. Until until the next uh, part of the live, you can always go online and check out our live raffle that is uh, going on at the moment. And you can go win a Seasonic PSU, a P1000 power supply, the Platinum series that is um, the same series that is being used here at the uh, location for the complete HWBot World Series. Actually, Seasonic is partnering with the, um, the HWBot World Tour to provide all the PSUs 
for the uh, for the uh, amateur series as well as some of the extreme you can win uh, MSI Z170A Gaming Pro Carbon you can uh, win also a G Skill DDR4 kit the same kit that the guys are using today that's the same kit the amateur and the extreme guy did use and of course one of the HWBot Tomo collector Tomo flask we'll see you in the next few seconds